Now, so girl, I don't know what all the fuck going on with me in my mind this morning, but I just was inspired to put this Harriet Winslow wig on. I don't know what's going on with this background, but it matched my blouse, and I'm just going to roll with it. Did you get into last night's episode of Love and Hip Hop Hollywood? I'm going to say this, and it's a whole bunch of people that's probably not going to like what I got to say. Um, y'all, I don't know if I'm going to be able to follow Love and Hip Hop Hollywood all the way through to the end. I'm just being honest with you. I don't know if it's got to do with this moon, Mercury being in retrograde, and all this other astrological stuff that I do not understand and cannot comprehend. Nevertheless, I'm just not feeling it. Like... 80% of what's going on, I'm just not feeling. And it just really feels like all the cast members at this point are just phoning it in. They're just like, shit, we don't hit a lick. There's some shit we do to get a good check. Let me come do a one-two step for an hour, then leave. Like, the show just ain't giving me anything right now. And that's just true tea. Let's just start at the very beginning. You know, when Safari read the hell out of A1... Bitch, I couldn't do nothing but fall out laughing. Now, you know, it's funny because some of some of Safari's comments were riddled in toxic masculinity. Oh, yeah, ain't nobody with gold hair finna whoop my ass. You got black fingernails on and shiny shoes as if men are not allowed to wear shiny shoes or explore with colors on their extremities. It's such a primitive way of thinking. But loving Hip Hop Hollywood, loving Hip Hop VH1 as a whole, you know, I mean, No Shade has a basic ass audience who will still laugh at basic ass jokes like attacking a man's masculinity or sexuality because he's got on glitter based shoes. So for whatever it's girl, I got a hat in my damn face. I guess I'm gonna have to record this video with this thing sticking in my eye this whole time. Hold on, girl. So for whatever it's worth, I'm gonna have to key key right along with it because that's what they gave. Ha 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 ha! Oh, it's so funny. He came for a one hair, came for his nails and his shoes. Moving right along. Princess getting that body mold done and Ray J showing up. Um, I'm not understanding why Princess is so bothered by Monice at this point. And y'all, again, you can, you can, I don't know, you can tell by the tone of my last couple videos. I guess it's just a maturity thing. I, I'm going to be honest with you, y'all. I really feel like I'm evolving and I'm aging out of all this reality TV stuff. Because it's like, for Princess to just be as pretty as she is, have the life that she have, have a baby, a healthy baby. Why are you so bothered by Monique? Like, I just, girl, I'd be somewhere living my best life and not worrying about what Monique is saying. But again, y'all, that's me and my 35-year-old brain. I'm sorry if I'm about to age out from a lot of y'all and what it is y'all like me to talk about. But after like seven years of just watching reality TV and going in and out with these reviews and laughing and cracking jokes, y'all, this shit just done got old because the drama has gotten old. Like, this... Can we get some new shit going on? Like something new. Nevertheless, I like what Ray J told Princess that in two months you will not be dealing with this because you're gonna be somewhere being somebody's mama taking care of their family and that's what the fuck you need to be doing. Like quiet as it's kept. Half the people on all these love and hip hop franchises I grew up with and they were the same damn age as me when they came out. Bitch, on August 20th, I'd be 35. So some of y'all hoes is 37, 38. I'm just not really interested any longer in hearing 40 year olds get on the internet and call people bitches and drunk cross tables. I'm just not there anymore. Um, Lyrica. This some advice from Mother Winslow. I don't know how this season is going to shake out for you in A1. But if you do care about your marriage, you need to get the entire fuck off this show. Because for one, you went through it. Now you're having to live it on camera. And then you're going to have to relive everyone's opinions during a reunion. Your own mama busted you. And you could tell 
that you was mad as fuck with your mama for repeating what the fuck you told her. And your mama and A1 mama so happy to be on camera, they just running off at the mouth. Your mama said to you, Lyrica, even you told me he sent you inappropriate messages. Then you're going to look at your mom and be like, see, my now I feel like you being messy like K. Michelle and Brooke. Then what you should have did was said, cut, cut. And you should have went and ripped all the tape out of all them damn cameras because your mama just co-signed the fact that at least on a one-way street, Safari sent you dirty messages. And then you're going to get mad and try to cry your way out of the situation. This just don't look good for you, Lyrica. It does not look good at all, mama. You look at all kinds of guilty and it looked like somebody's got it out for A1's ass. And we'll get into that a little later. Um, A1 meeting with Ray J. A1, when you was with Ray J talking about you almost beat Safari ass, I was like, well, and when, and maybe there was a scene that was part of the show that we, the viewing audience, didn't get to see because A1, like you charging at someone and security jumping in hardly constitutes being about to whoop somebody's ass. Like, listen, Safari don't give me that he just out there Kimbo slicing motherfuckers and neither does A1. But I really do feel like if A1 and Safari were to square up, Safari will probably win. Now, um, as this shit is playing out, it looked like, you know, Safari might have did what they accusing him of doing and that's real fucked up. And I mean, you probably do deserve to get your ass whooped, but we'll just have to see how that shake out. This rock star kid, I don't like him at all. He corny as fuck. Um, Love and Hip Hop Hollywood has already reached its corny quotient. Y'all got rid of Hazel E, thank the Lord. Okay, but now you've got Brooke and Marcus with all this corny shit they got going on. Then you got, you know, Ray J with his over the topness. You got K. Michelle, who's basically a veteran, blowing scenes out of proportion and saying things to people she normally would not say so she can get her <coughs> scene filmed. Then you got this corny ass rock star dude, and y'all are trying to go down this rabbit hole of rock star and A1 fighting over Apple Watch, but they really fighting over fucking peanuts, not even apples, because Apple not even talented. Like, y'all. I am sorry. I hate that we've grown to a point now where everybody think rap is their way out the hood. <coughs> Ooh, you strung together two lines. Um, son, 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 and then now you a rapper like, there is nothing about the verses, flows, and bars that this girl has delivered on the three or two episodes she's been on this show that has made me be like, damn, she's the one. On top of that love and hip hop people, like, come on y'all, with this whole turn a stripper into a rapper, make her, po make her popular, like, the shit is just done. Ah! Like, help me help you. There are so many other street girl narratives out there. Like, what about the girl that was holding dope for the kingpin? Now he don't went to jail and she out here struggling. She used to live in a high life for 10 years and now she broke. Tell that story. That's a real hood story. Tell the story about the girl that used to slang dope. Now she just got out of prison. Now she trying to break into the rap game. Tell that story. But this whole stripper narrative, which is really counterproductive to society, because on one token, you showing these hoes talking about they trying to get out the strip club, this, that, and the third, as if being in the strip club was some old involuntary ass shit that fucking had to happen. I am sorry. There is a small percentage of strippers out there that I feel bad for, but the majority of them, bitch, you in the motherfucking strip club stripping because you want to and because of a string of whores horrible fucking decisions. You had one baby and you didn't have no fucking job. You gonna have a second baby, you still ain't got no fucking job. Then you got a third, now you feeling desperate and you gotta go to the strip club. Nah, bitch, that ain't circumstance. That's fucking choice, okay? I know hoes out here with six motherfucking kids who are making it on their own and ain't never had to go to no strip club. I am over this stripper narrative. I am over us glorifying these fucking strip. Like, girl, listen, can we get back to the days when we would look at a bitch and be like, bitch, you're a fucking stripper. You're a stripper. 
Okay? There's nothing classy about it. There's nothing admirable about it. There's nothing to look up to. There's nothing glamorous about it. You take your clothes off and let me dig all in you for a dollar. Like, I'm, I'm just over it. I'm on my high horse. I'm sweating all between my arms. I don't know what's going on, but just ride with me. Nevertheless, I will say this about Apple Watts. I respect the level of integrity that she had when she met with Rockstar in the studio and told him, um, like, you know what? I don't think you fuck with me for real. I just met you. You talking all this shit about A1 to somebody you don't even know. Yeah, I think I'm a bounce. At least she got some kind of code about herself and some decency. And for that, I'm willing to see through all the stripper stuff and say, but beyond all of that, you are a real person and I wish you the best. But I honestly think you would do better off trying to become a supervisor at a telemarketing job than rapping. Because mama, we just don't see it for you and you just don't have it. And you need, like, Mona need to tell you that. Mona been in this music game long enough. You don't have it. You're not about to turn into the next Cardi B. You're not about to turn into K. Michelle. You're not about to turn into Amara La Negra. You're not. You're not. You're not. And I know this seems mean, but I, I just got an honesty chip on my shoulder today and a wild hair up my ass and this uh, mother wisdom wig on. And I just felt it prudent to tell you the truth. Um, A1, I got a question for you. Is your mama your mama or is she your daddy? Quiet as it's kept. She giving me a real bing, rain, tease. All in the face, in the jawbone, and in the collarbone. The collarbone connected to the neck bone, which is connected to the man bone. Because she real rough. Now, you know, Mama D got a little wrath and roughness to her. Mary J got a little rough and raspiness to her. But them is still women's. Something about your mama in her shoulder area and in her lower mandible is just giving me um, not biologically female. She giving me real pole season two audition tease. And I'm just saying, is your mama a part of the original House of Abundance? I'm just trying to figure out because abundantly she got a whole lot of testosterone all over the place. Had done fucked around and wasted that cake batter, that cornbread batter, or that sand and water, whatever the fuck she was stirring in that damn pot. Mind you, no other ingredients out on the counter anyway in the damn kitchen. Fake. Um, why she wasting that cornbread? But we'll get to that. Um, Lyrica, when your mama showed up around A1 them house. It's just they doing too much. Like, and, and I know certain folks, powers that be, don't like when I talk like this and I start unraveling shit, but I just feel that it's fucking necessary for somebody out here in this review game to be the system of checks and balances and just keep shit fucking real. The shit don't feel organic. It just doesn't. Like when Lyrica Mama walked in that house, it really felt like call time, 8 o'clock, we got to be out by 8.45, we got to get this scene in 15 minutes and go. And then you just walk in with all this unrealistic, bad-ass, horrible-ass fucking acting. I'm like, when y'all get this shit in the fucking editing room, nobody has thought to be like, bitch, we need to reshoot that. Or bitch, we need to call Angela Bassett in or Whoopi Goldberg or Taraji or even Vivica Fox one-dimensional acting ass to coach these people because it just was not good. And then somewhere along the lines, it gets blurred for the viewer between what's fake and what's real because she's throwing in there like a Tasmania devil. Then your mama throwing pancake batter or buttermilk complete all over the place. Then you kicking the mama out. It was just tied, late, done, through, and I'm over it. The funniest thing was A1 being more concerned about that goddamn Jiffy cornbread mix in his perm than it was, you know, the shit being all over his house. I'm just not understanding. Um, and on top of that, Lyrica, y'all know that shit with her getting back saying, K. Michelle, K. Michelle, I need to find a K. Michelle. Y'all know that shit would never fucking happen in real life, and it was horrible. It was just, it was bad, y'all. It was bad, it was bad, it was bad. Mona, don't be mad with me. I'm just trying to be super duper honest. It's making this shit painful to watch. It just is like it's making this shit painful to watch it really is y'all need to throw the whole fucking brook 
away. Her, Marcus, them lumps, the titties seem not to be no good anyway. Throw them shits away and throw her ass away with them. It's it's just, it's not going nowhere. Then next week, Stasi is supposed to be, it's like, uh, uh, you know, so like, y'all help me out. Is it? Is it me with the problem? Like, have I evolved too far beyond reality TV? Or are we all seeing the same damn thing? Are y'all entertained by this? I'm just asking. Like, I don't know, but it's just, I'm telling y'all, I'm not gonna be able to make it all season with this love and hip hop Hollywood. I'm just keeping it 100% real with y'all. So don't even blow up my line, like when the Mondays roll around the Tuesdays and the review is not there. Um. After Paris kicked the lady out, you know, Monique, I mean, Monique's meet with Ray J. You know, I guess part of that confrontation was real. And you know what? I'm with Monique on this part. I don't understand why your wife fucking keeps getting a pass, pregnant or no pregnant. And just as blind as, you know, your, your, your family is about the shit that you're doing that's prompting Princess to act this way. You're blind as fuck, Ray J, by the fact that she's your wife and carrying your unborn child about the behavior that she's doing that's prompting Monique to throw a chair at her ass. Monique didn't just knock on y'all door and throw no chair at your wife. Your wife showed up to a place trying to show her ass and almost caught a chair to the face. Okay, was Monique wrong for throwing that chair? Absolutely wrong. But Monique could not have thrown a chair anywhere near Princess had Princess not brought her ass and her unborn child down to the event. That's how I see it, and I don't even want no debate from y'all about it. It's true tea. Princess's focus should have been growing and nurturing her damn baby from the comfort of her goddamn home and not trying to fuss and embarrass Monique and her bad parents or whatever you want to call it down to an event. Next. A1 and Tracy Braxton, his mama and his brother. Them me and <coughs> I don't call, fucked up and got aggravated in my throat. Them Tracy Braxton and her two sons mixed with Ving Rhames me and down to the event. A1, I don't know who you pissed off in production. They have it out for you. They have it out for your marriage and for your esteem because they keep pushing this narrative about you've changed, you've changed, you've changed. They're even bringing in people from your past and your loved ones to further push this narrative that you've changed and it's obviously getting under your skin. You've pissed somebody off and your ass is the scapegoat and the fool for this season. And I just hope that you're producing enough music that you can get the fuck from off of here before shit spiral the fuck out of control because it's not looking too good for you like you got mud all over your face and then safari don't admit it on tv that he don't fuck your damn wife like i don't really know what's going on here i don't know what in the kirk and rashida is going on the fuck here but i think that a1 you need to cut your hair maybe you need to go back to being the old you and you need to get shit in perspective um Lyrica, I'm believing you fuck Safari or let him lick it or touch it or, you know, flirt it with it. You definitely did something inappropriate because you erased some damn messages. This is some shit, okay? Now, if y'all really want to keep our attention, cut out all the other shit. Let us see Princess and Brandy fight. Let Princess drag Brandy. And then let's see Safari, Lyrica, and A1. Let's see all that story. Fizz ass could go back to wherever the fuck he came from with these magical exes coming down the stairs so late. Tied through. We done with that. We done with all of that. All of that is so Jocelyn Hernandez, Stevie J, circa season one. We over all of that. Give us us new. Give us us new. Um, child, I don't I already said too damn much. My phone gonna be ringing. Somebody, I'm gonna get a call from my agent or something about it. So let me get the fuck off the line. But, bitch, I'm with the shits today. I got an attitude and a wire hair up my ass. So I'm pretty sure I'll be calling y'all the bitch and moan and bellyache about some more shit. And I'll call you later. Bye.